Good morning. Before we begin, we ask everyone to be sure all cell phones are turned off during Mass. Today is Sunday, November 19th. In our liturgy, we are observing the 33rd Sunday of the year in Ordinary Time. We welcome everyone, especially all visitors, to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church. Now, will everyone please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. So we welcome all of you to this celebration, and also especially to those who are celebrating with us from their homes. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you. For it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. When people are saying peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of the light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. 
Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with it and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I'll give you greater responsibilities. Come, share in your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you greater responsibility. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. 
but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. And after this long gospel reading, what next? When I do my uh, examination of conscience in the night before going to sleep, sometimes the que a question pump, pops up in my head. And the question is, imagine that God came now and asked you to give an account of your life. What account will you give? If God comes and says, give me an account of the talents I give to you, what account will I give? If God comes and asks me to give an account of the time he gave to me, the energy, he gave to me, the wisdom he gave to me, all the things that he has given to me to make a meaningful life here on earth, what account would I give? And so that examination of conscience that day will go beyond what did I do wrong that I need to ask God for forgiveness in my prayer before I go to bed. So I want to ask that question to you. Imagine that God arrived here today and said, what account would you give to me of the talents I have given to you, I gave to you, the wisdom, the time, the energy, the strength, and all the gifts that I give to you to make this world a more meaningful place to live in? What? would be your account that you would give. That is what the gospel of today is calling on us to reflect on, especially as we are coming to our, the end of our liturgical year. And most of the readings are leading us to reflect on giving an account to God. The second reading tells us that we should be awake. Paul to the Thessalonians tells us that we are children of light and not of darkness. So we should stay awake and live lives of light, not of darkness. So then, what is the life of light that I have lived? So in this gospel text of today, Jesus gives this parable. A man going on a journey that he's going to stay away for long takes his property and gives to his servants. Take note of this. The parable is saying that he gave his, what is his, to his servants. And he says, take care of these talents as I go away. By the way, talents in this particular context is uh, monetary value, like the dollar. So he gives these talents and says to them, I am going away, take care of it while I'm away. He gives one five, to another two, and to a third one, according to their capabilities. When he leaves, the one who received five, traded with the five talents, and immediately made another five. The second one traded with his two and made another two. And then the third one went and buried his talents. And I hope you, are, you heard what he said. At least he's very honest. 
He says that I knew you were very demanding. He is honest in the way he sees, he tells his master exactly how he sees him. You harvest where you do not reap, uh, plant, and you gather where you have not scattered. So out of fear, I went off and buried the talent in the ground. Here it is, take it. God has given each one of us, as we are brought into this world, a lot of talents, a lot of resources. As I mentioned when I was asking the question, God has given to us not only material resources, but human resource. Each one of us is a load of human resource, each one of us. And what he has given to us, including time and the creation in which he has put us, the families in which he put us, the workplaces, all those things, we are supposed to give an account of it. So the question remains, what have I done with all this? It is not in order to frighten us and make us start to accuse ourselves of how we have wasted our resources, how we have wasted time, how we have wasted what God has given to us. Each time we reflect on the word of God, it is meant to encourage us from this point on to push forward. I, one of my favorite texts in scripture, that keeps coming back to my head all the time is when Jesus was crucified with two thieves and one of them just the dying minutes literally the dying minutes says to Jesus look I know that I deserve what is happening to me now you do not I know that I have wasted my life, but I'm begging you, remember me in your kingdom. And I love the response of Jesus. Today, today, you will be with me in paradise. So even if I discover I've wasted my life, it is not too late. You still have time to make use of your life. And there is something that a lot of elderly people like to think about themselves. I have reached this point. I don't think I have much use anymore. It is not true. Do you, are you aware that you are a store of knowledge, of wisdom, that this world needs? but which they cannot, we cannot find it in any book on this earth. It is not written down in any book. What you have inside you, the knowledge and the wisdom, which this world lacks today. I don't know how it is here as such, but when I read, it looks like Young people no longer think that the elderly people have anything to, to offer. Where I come from, well, it is also dwindling, but there is still that sense that we better go back to the elderly people and learn something before they go. So, for example, at home, I spend a lot of time with my father who is over 90 years old. And I have a number of videos of him speaking wisdom. So you have a store of knowledge that you, have, you, you, you need to offer. So find creative ways of sharing this knowledge, this wisdom, the talents that you are still holding so that they don't go to waste. The first reading tells us that the wife 
A good wife is a treasure. I want to spread it out. A good husband also is a treasure. A good son or daughter is a treasure. We are all a treasure that when we do what we are supposed to do, when we play our roles well, it brings joy to the whole family. And please do not limit family here to just your nucleus family. The family of the church is part of it. The family of our community, our human family, we all play our different roles to enrich the family. And there is no role that should be diminished. No role should be looked at as being of no value. All the roles are of great value. Dearly beloved, let us ask God to help us to discover what the talents are that he has given to us and what he wants us to share. And let us ask for the courage to be able to do that. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Father of all things, Lord from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. As we ready our hearts to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, let us bring our prayers to him. For Pope Francis and all the bishops, that they may lead us by word and example to share our gifts generously with the poor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all who govern, that they may use their power for the sake of the common good, respecting the dignity of all human life and true religious freedom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our many young people, that they may hear the voice of the Lord calling them to serve the church as priests, deacons, religious brothers, sisters, and lay ministers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who call themselves followers of Christ, <clears throat> that they may see the beauty of the Eucharist and believe in Jesus' real presence, his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the gift of the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in our parish family who suffer from any kind of pain or illness, that they may be find comfort in the healing power of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have passed from this life, that they may rejoice in the company of the saints. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intentions and the intentions of all who have asked for our prayers, especially for the intentions of Stephanie, for whom we offer the Mass today. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, hear the prayers we bring before you this day and answer them in your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us 
the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, and his assistants, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Being children of the same Father, let us pray to him in the words Jesus our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, and you say to us today, Peace I leave you, my own peace I give to you. Look then not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your sister. Let us greet each other with the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, Jesus who died on the cross to take away our sins. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Let us pray together our prayer of the Eucharist. Lord Jesus, you promise to never leave us. You invite us to consume you in the form of bread and wine, and so you remain fully present in our lives. You place yourself within us as a gift to be shared. Help us in bringing you to others through acts of love, kindness, and generosity. Amen. Please, let's be seated for the announcement. This Thursday, all are invited to our special Mass of Thanksgiving, celebrated at 9 a.m. You are welcome to bring along the bread or wine that will be served with your Thanksgiving food to be blessed. The special collection at Mass will benefit Mercy House's outreach to the homeless. Last weekend was our primary sign-up weekend for this year's Adopt-A-Family for Christmas program. We still have several families that need to be adopted. If you would like to adopt a family, please contact Rochelle Lowry, our OLMC coordinator, whose number is in the bulletin. All parishioners who have adopted a family for Christmas are reminded to bring their gifts and gift cards to O'Donnell Hall no earlier than 9 a.m. Saturday morning, December 2nd, and no later than 5 p.m. Sunday, December 3rd. Monsignor Doug is providing his final presentation in his series on The Beauty of the Eucharist on Thursday evening, November 30th. The presentation is based on Matthew Kelly's book by the same title, Beautiful Eucharist. Copies are available as a gift for every family. Please take one home if you haven't done so already, and please come to the presentation. The annual tamale sale, sponsored by the Knights of Columbus, is ongoing with pickup available on Sunday morning, December 10th. Ordering information through John Gleason is in the bulletin. The Women's Soul Group is sponsoring their annual Christmas luncheon on Thursday, December 7th at the Santa Ana Country Club. Be sure to order your tickets as soon as possible by contacting Beth Fleming. All women, men, family, and friends are invited and welcome. All are invited to join the OLMC choir and lectors for our Advent lessons and carol service on Saturday evening, December 9th at 7 p.m. in the church. This beautiful service will consist of scripture readings or lessons, followed by a congregational carol or choral anthem reflecting on the lesson's message. A reception will follow in O'Donnell Hall. Details of all activities may be found in this week's bulletin. Please take a copy home with you as you leave today. And thank you all for coming to Mass to join us to worship God. And thanks especially to our music ministry who have facilitated and made our worship um, so nice. Gregory the Great said, one who sings, worships, how many times? Seven times. So thank you. Thank you to our reader, to the mass service, and our Eucharistic minister, and all of you who have made it possible for us to have it. Thank you to John for making it possible for those at home to also uh, share this Eucharistic celebration with us. We want to acknowledge those who are worshiping with us today who usually don't come here. If this is not your usual parish, but that you have just come to join us, please. Could you show 
Oh, good. Uh, and would you be able to, t can you just tell us where you are coming from? St. New York. Orange. Oh, okay. All right. So you are welcome. Then there are two hands at the back there. New York City. At least that one I think I know. Thank you for coming. And you? Texas. Texas. I've heard about it. 